Welcome in on this Wednesday. I'm Elizabeth Cook. Israel responds to an ultimatum from the U.S. The demands that could halt military aid to the Middle East. And Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky believes his victory plan against Russia could bring peace as soon as next year. But it still includes a big hurdle for the West. This is CBS News 24-7. We're going to get to all of that very shortly, but right off the top, we start in the U.S. with our Georgia map. 20 days left in this election cycle, and the state in play is the one you see right here. 16 electoral votes at stake. The candidates need 270 to win. The state officials reporting record turnout during the first day of early in-person voting, with nearly 250,000 ballots cast as of 4 p.m. Eastern last night. This after a judge handed down two major rulings directly impacting the state's election process. First, blocking a rule requiring clerks to hand count ballots on election night. The second, making it mandatory that county officials certify election results by November 12th. CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian is in Marietta, Georgia for us, and she joins me now. Nicole, thank you so much for being with us. Can you go into detail about these rulings and what they actually mean for the state? Plains all the way up into the northeast. They're finally getting to a taste of that winter like weather that's right around the corner for us. It's still fall, of course, but look at these temperatures. I mean, daytime highs today widespread throughout the east coast remain in the 50s and the 60s. Heading into this afternoon for our forecast, that includes areas like Cincinnati, Washington, D.C., all the way up into Boston. But then we head over into Texas real fast. Let's give some love over here because it was just yesterday and the day before, too, where we were breaking records with our daytime highs in the 90s widespread throughout major cities in Texas and now that cold front's impacting them too. High pressures driving this cold, dense air all throughout that region. And you know, over 90 million people just this morning woke up to frost advisories and freeze warnings wide stretch throughout that area. That's highlighted in this blue color below me, issued by the National Weather Service. However, now that's starting to expire and we'll see better conditions into the next couple days as we slowly start to defrost. Here's what's happening. That cold front swept from the northeast all the way down into Florida. And I mentioned this earlier, that's actually helping suppress a lot of the tropical activity down south, but for the rest of us, just north in areas like the plains, all the way off into the northeast, that system continues to bring in cold, dense air for us. We're about 10 to 20 degrees below average in certain communities. Here's our departure from normal. Usually we're about 10 degrees warmer around this time of year in areas like Cleveland, stretching all the way over into Buffalo. As we head all the way down into areas like Atlanta, we're also dealing with below normal conditions too, and that includes Texas, where like I mentioned just yesterday, we were sitting well above average. So I'll have more more on this forecast coming up in just a bit and some red flag warnings that are actually in effect off closer to areas like California stretching throughout the Dakotas where they're dealing with fire weather conditions right around the corner, Liz. Yeah, from heat to cold, you're kind of getting everything. A little taste US of it today. all. I know. All right, Jess, thank you. Of course. Coming up, we're going to take you back to the south in North Carolina and Florida. The latest on the hurricane recoveries there. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis praising recovery efforts in the aftermath of Hurricane Milton. He said power has never been restored to so many so quickly after a major storm. But in those low-lying communities, floodwaters climb higher and higher, and people fear the worst is yet to come. And on top of all of that, tens of thousands of Floridians are still in the dark. In total... That is White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre briefing the White House Press Corps. Uh, a couple big headlines to come out of this briefing. $1.8 billion in aid will be directed to the victims of both Hurricanes Milton and Helene, Florida, Georgia, and North Carolina. Many thousands of people are still in the dark there. Dozens are still missing. Jean-Pierre also addressing uh, the conversation that President Biden will have with uh, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky later on today ahead of his trip to Germany, Biden's trip to Germany, and also answering reporters' questions on the U.S. saying that they may withhold military aid to Israel if Israel does not facilitate humanitarian aid into Gaza. We'll have much more on this throughout the day here on CBS News.
news 24 7. Coming up, Reed Cowan on deck to take over. He's going to take you to the campaign trail. Stay with us.